Tonight, we're in Nebraska for an intrastate battle. In the red corner, it's the Huskers. Lots of new faces with a ton of talent and three wins in their first five games. And in the blue corner, one of the best squads in the land, the Creighton Blue Jays, a top 10 ranking with a roster to back it up. Big 10 basketball right now. A wintry night in Omaha, Nebraska, and the Big Ten Network is at the CHI Health Center in Omaha. Basketball on the Big Ten Network is powered by Unleaded 88. And tonight, it's the eighth-ranked Creighton Blue Jays at home, hosting the three and two Nebraska Cornhuskers. Hi again, everybody. Alongside Sean Morris, I'm Kevin Kugler. Wonderful to have you with us for this interstate battle between the Huskers and the Blue Jays. And I hope you like pace because both of these teams, Sean, want to go up and down the floor. Kevin, you hit it right on the head. Both of these squads like to get up and down the floor, use their defense to create open floor scoring opportunities. Both of these fan bases have been looking forward to this annual event. I'm just glad we're finally here. We're looking forward to it. Creighton is coming off one of their toughest tests that they'll see all year long. Went down to Allen Fieldhouse on Tuesday, lost by one skinny point, but Denzel Mahoney had a terrific game for the Blue Jays. Kevin, he was the sixth man of the year a season ago in the Big East, and moving into the starting lineup has certainly not diminished his productivity. 19 points on 7 of 14 shooting versus the Jayhawks. 40% from three on the year. Also contributing on the defensive end. Picks up a couple steals per ball game and can get to the rim and finish. A very, very all-around talented player for the Creighton Blue Jays. On the other side, Kobe Webster coming off a solid performance in his own right in a losing effort to Georgia Tech. He averages 12 points per ball game on the year. Knocks down over 40% of his offerings from deep. That certainly was helped by his 6 of 7 conversion rate versus the Yellow Jackets earlier this week in the Big Ten ACC Challenge. And you see what the Cornhuskers want to do, turn their defense into offense. And a big reason for that has been the transfer from Western Kentucky. Delano Banton has done an outstanding job of filling the stat sheet. Puts up 17 points, nine boards, six assists per ball game, and can also be impactful on the defensive end of the floor with his length. His ability to close out on shooters will be tested tonight versus the Creighton Blue Jays because this is a team that likes to spread you out, and if you don't close out under control, they will beat you with the back door. Those numbers for Delano Banton, only Io Dosumo and Delano Banton are the only players in the league to average 14 points, five rebounds, and five assists per game. And if you're Creighton, it starts with the Big East's top returning scorer and the preseason Big East player of the year, Marcus Zagorowski. And he, you see he averages six assists per ball game, but I think the real story is the fact he's north of a two-to-one assist turnover ratio. Outstanding for Creighton in the open floor. Now we are ready to get this one started in Omaha, Nebraska, in the all-black uniforms tonight. Breaking those out for this rivalry game. And the start has been so important in these games over the years. Creighton is especially a fast starting team. They've led it half in 17 of the last 21. The entry pass tipped into the corner. Jays keep the possession and Denzel Mahoney picking up off in Lawrence. Nice job by Mahoney of stepping into that three. A breakdown defensively. Good job of deflecting the backdoor cut, which I expect Creighton to try to establish. But Kevin, the big thing was Teddy Allen tried to dribble a loose ball rather than pick it up. That created the scoring opportunity for Mahoney. One of the things Sean Morris loves. Uh -huh. Somebody dribbling a loose ball. For Christmas, just get an unwavering <laughs> commitment. No one does it again. Kobe Arnerson with 10 on the shot clock to Banton. Banton working inside nice. against Zegarowski. Good job of recognizing the mismatch and utilizing that 6'8 height to take down Zegarowski in the paint. Quickly up the floor to Damian Jefferson and Allen with a rebound. That's one thing Banton's going to be able to do this year is create mismatches out there on both ends of the floor. It, with his length, he's a very intriguing matchup defensively because he can close out under control and block shots. And offensively, Kevin, because of that height, he can look over the top. Mitch Ballock with the foul on the drive there. And your starting lineups, we've talked about Zegarowski, we've talked about Mahoney, but Ballock deserves some conversation as well. Fifth in Creighton history with 239 career threes and Lat Mayan. Earlier in the year, we've been calling him Lap Mayan. We've been told that's not correct. We are wrong, and now we're right. So Lap Mayan, Lap Mayan. Either way, Fred Hoiberg wants him to shoot the basketball a lot more. Averaging nine points per game in his first year 
with the Huskers. Back to the line for one more goes Trey McGowan's. And McGowan's has been an outstanding addition to this program as well, not just with what he's been able to do offensively, a double-digit score, but I think he has a chance to be an elite lockdown defender. He certainly showed that at Pitt. Get the guy with that kind of experience immediately eligible will pay big dividends once conference play begins for Nebraska. Christian Bishop, the skip to Mahoney. Jefferson enters it back to Bishop. Oh, nice skip pass. Zagorowski, extra pass out to the wing, and the three up and down for Denzel Mahoney. Man, is he hot over the last couple games. And that was created because of the skip pass. What I mean by that is it didn't go to the side. It went directly into the corner, and then the reversal allowed the step in three. Good job of spacing and delivering the pass appropriately. Sean mentioned the top. Mahoney at 19 in Lawrence. Two for two from deep to start this one, but there's Teddy Allen with the answer, averaging over 17 points per game. And that's a good sign for the Cornhuskers. Only 28% shooting from behind the arc on the year for Teddy Allen prior to that offer. Really struggled from the floor against Georgia Tech on Wednesday night. Four for 16 from the floor. Foul a moment ago on McGowan's, his first. Zagorowski. Good hedge there by McGowan's, taking away the three-point shot. Bishop to skip to Zegarowski and a turnover. One of the areas that Creighton head coach Greg McDermott said they needed to tighten up a little bit, get those turnovers in order. That was something that caused him some concern from the Kansas game. Yeah, they had 14 miscues, and that led to 17 points off those turnovers for the Jayhawks. And in a game that came down to one point, all of those certainly add up. That turnover a little easier to tolerate, not because it was forced, but just because it wasn't a live ball turnover. Allen has it picked away. Here's a live ball turnover. Bishop on the run. Has Jefferson on his right. Bishop will take it all the way and draws the foul on Mayen. That was started with good team defense by the Blue Jays because they knew that Teddy Allen was going to try to spin and get back to that right hand. They jumped it. They deflect it. They get out in the open floor. They don't convert, but Bishop will shoot a couple. Now watch. They know he's going to go back to that strong hand. They strip it, and then the outstanding spacing. The player on the far side occupied the backpedaling Nebraska defender. That allowed the clear path to the rim for Bishop. Bishop, who had only missed three free throw attempts all year, misses the first, came in fourth in the league in free throw percentage. And 0 for 2 on that trip to keep it tied at 6. Well, good job on Mahoney of getting over the top of that screen. There it is again. Really well scouted by Creighton. They understand that Nebraska wants to get back to that strong hand, and they're running that double once that ball comes up off the floor to try to get the strip. Good job defensively by Creighton. Watch right here. They know he's going to come down with the crossover, the hand hedge. Zegarowski will go the other way. And the second on Mayen. So Lap Mayen, who has been a little bit of everything for Nebraska this year, has a double-digit rebounding game, three-point sharpshooter. He leaves the floor with those two fouls. Ivan Mudraogo on the floor trying to defend Zagorowski and a lob from Zagorowski to Bishop. That's going the other way. Be an offensive foul against the Creighton Post. Well, if you're a Nebraska fan, Sean Moore, you like this, this start a little bit better for your defense. Yeah, and a good job there. Really good job of understanding that the lob was up there, a little bit short. If it's up by the rim, Bishop has a better chance to make the play. Creighton never trailed last year in a 95-76 win. They led 10-0, 18-2, 27-4, and 37-7. Crowd here in Omaha liked that very much. All of those scores. Allen, the three, no good, but a foul is going to be called as Mahoney closed on Allen and picks up the personal foul, his first. You want to close out on the shooter, and you see the size advantage employed by Banton. He's able to look over the top, and you want to contest, and he got him. The hand was up appropriately, but he got him with the hip down low. Allen, 63% in this early season at the line, 89% or 88% at Western Nebraska Community College. And with that free throw, Nebraska has the first lead over Creighton in Omaha since the 2017-2018 season when they led 40 to 39 with 15 minutes to go in the second half. They played here last year and they played here that year. 2017, I was somewhat younger and still had no future. Yes, but we were both innocent then, yes. Sean. 
Allen two for three on that trip at the line. And an 8-6 lead for Nebraska. Now Allen has drawn the assignment in the near corner here on Mahoney. He can't lose Mahoney and get back door. Zagorowski with the three, and the answer comes from the preseason Big East Player of the Year. McGowans popping out Ryan Kalkrenner. Seven-foot freshman from St. Louis. The skip into the corner to McGowans. McGowans was on the sideline, and the turnover back to the Blue Jays. And that's one where you have to be shot ready if you're McGowans. And what I mean by that, Kevin, you have to have your knees bent. So when the pass comes to you, you don't have the opportunity to shuffle your feet. And the last time, Dan Zagorowski doing a nice job of giving it up and getting it back. And if you're going to come out, you have to come out far more aggressively than Nebraska did there. Now Zagorowski. We'll work it up the floor. Off that three a moment ago, he'll launch a second three. Wudraogo closed on him and bumped him, and there's three free throws coming. And Wudraogo was the one who had the defensive assignment last time. He got burned with the three. He came up far too aggressively. Zegarowski knew he had the big fella out of his defensive comfort zone. Tight start here in Omaha. Basketball on the Big Ten Network is powered by Unleaded 88, the clean burning fuel choice that's engine smart, earth kind. And brought to you by State Farm when you want the real deal. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. I think it's a safe bet that there would have been a 2020 on that banner had March not gone the way it did with the COVID-19 pandemic. Who knows how far that Creighton team could have gone. Now, Marcus Zagorowski's status was in question at the end of that season with the knee injury. Didn't finish out the Seton Hall game at the end of the year. He had said that he didn't know if he'd be able to go during the course of an NCAA tournament, but unfortunately we didn't get a chance to see what this Creighton team could do with or without him in the big dance. And three for three for Zagorowski. We saw him at that spot at the end of the game against Kansas, went two of three, had gone there earlier in the second half, went one of three. So each trip over the last week has gotten better for Marcus Zagorowski. And you knew that, you know, water always finds its level, as the old saying goes. He was a 76% foul shooter a season ago. That was an aberration, what you saw in Lawrence. Woodrow go inside off a good feet from Bant and can't finish, and Antoine Jones will start up the floor for the Blue Jays. Ballock in the corner, back up, Zagorowski, quick fire from the top of the key in the three fall. Talk about being shot ready. You saw Zagorowski. Were bent when the pass came to him in the shooting pocket. All he had to do was go into a shooting motion. Excellent job playing without the ball by Zegarowski. Zegarowski, who had 30 against the Huskers last year, and Thorbjörn Arnerson with the answer. He has really struggled to find his footing early from three point land this year. Only 20% prior to that offering, but I tell you what, in the game versus Georgia Tech, he didn't score, but he did a lot of other things with seven boards, four on the offensive end. Rotation around Zegarowski. 12 on the shot clock. The pivot, the spin, the two won't go. And the rebound tipped to Thorpe Yarnerson by Banton. Banton trailing on the play. His three off the heel and the rebound to Mahoney. And that's not necessarily his game. He got goaded into that shot. He's under 22% from three on the year. They'll allow that, whether it be in transition or in a half-court set. Just four for 20 now with that miss for Banton. And Zegarowski trapped in the corner. And there's that cylinder violation that will be called against Teddy Allen and the Husker. Back to the three a moment ago from Zegarowski. Nice job of pushing the ball up the floor. You always have to be cognizant of the trailer. In this case, it was Zegarowski. He did an outstanding job. Watch, his knees are bent. His feet are already set. Catch and release. Beautiful job in the open floor. Not just pushing the pace, but properly spacing the floor and then kicking it back to the trailer. Just a terrific basketball player. Was all Big East freshman pick on that freshman team a couple of years ago. Second team all Big East last year. Top returning scorer in the preseason player of the year in the league this year. And he has done nothing, Sean, in the early stages of this season to make you think that he cannot live up to that billing. We mentioned before the cylinder violation that has created this out-of-bounds play. Basically, imagine like you're in a phone booth. You can't get close enough to that person in the phone booth space, or they will call a foul. 
Or if you're old, the old get smart cone of silence. Remember that? <laughs> Jefferson with the three. I may be the only one, Kevin. I, I appreciate that. I brought it up, so clearly I have some recollection of it. Stevenson to Banton, left alone again, baited into the three, but this time he hits it. Beautiful job of utilizing the pass fake. They thought he was going to throw it into the corner. Because he utilized the pass fake, that allowed him the wide open shot at the three. Nice job by Banton. And the hands inside trying to take it away by Shamil Stevenson. The ball tied up. Possession arrow, Nebraska. One point game, the Huskers get it back, and Banton involved in that as well. We talked about Banton and his versatility. Here he shows just an excellent job of utilizing the pass fake. Creighton bites, he's able to step up. The difference between that, this made shot, and the miss, watch the rotation. The one he missed came off the side of his hand. Here, excellent backspin, finds the bottom of the well. He is such an intriguing talent for Fred Hoiberg. The length. The leadership, one of the things Fred Hoiberg has really talked about, and a foul going the other way. Yeah, offense. That'll, that'll be second on Teddy Allen. Yeah, and that was a really easy call for the official to make because watch the swim move. Watch the offhand right here. That creates advantage, disadvantage, easy call for the official. Jefferson did a good job of staying in front of Allen, and Allen tried to utilize one of the oldest tricks in the book, but he got caught. Second on Allen. So Nebraska with a little bit of foul trouble. Teddy Allen with a pair. Lap Mayen with a pair. Malak into the corner to Jones. And that's an offensive foul on Antoine Jones. His first. And Thorby Arnerson reading well on defense in there to make the stop and get the turnover. Did an outstanding job of understanding where they wanted this play to go. Locked up. Took the punch. Will go the other way. You know, Sean, we've seen signs that both of these teams, even with short weeks of work, have really paid close attention to scouting. They, they certainly have, especially on the defensive end of the floor. Banton on the drive draws the foul. And that's going to go on Sharif Mitchell, his first. Watch the 6'8 player right here. Get down low. Good use of the crossover. A lot of times, Kevin, you'll see somebody use the crossover for almost eyewash. Here's dribbling with a purpose because not only did he go side to side, but most importantly, to get to the... He put the ball out in front. One more free throw for Banton. Huskers three for six early at the line. This is an area of concern, to say the least, for Nebraska last year. They were dead last in the conference at around 60%. Now they've improved. They're up around 67, 68%. They still have some ways to go, but that is a positive sign. Here's Jefferson. Ballock in the corner, throw Bjarnerson there. Good job of being there on the catch. Mitchell, the kick, extra pass out to Jones. Jones can't get the two to fall. Banton with the rebound. Huskers on a 7-0 run, and Banton lost the handle on the ball. Jays go the other way. Ballock. Mitchell, the weave to Bishop. And Bishop with the finish. Good job of switching sides of the floor and transition offense. Nebraska backpedaling. They start here in the right corner. They go over the top and ends at the rim. Good spacing and finding the open man by Creighton in the open floor. Good hands by Bishop inside to poke it free of Stevenson. Ballock, the no look to Jefferson. Mitchell. Now Ballock set, quick three, won't go, and Stevenson the rebound. Almost every three he shoots is a quick three, very quick release. Stevenson barreling through the defense, and a foul is called, and a timeout on the floor in Omaha, Nebraska. Good battle between these two rivals in the state of Nebraska. Banton with the, the feed inside. Zegarowski's been hot early with nine points for the Jays, who lead by a pair. Time for our State Farm State of Success, and it's the success that the Blue Jays had last year. 2019-2020, co-Big East champions. They won their share of the title right here on this floor against Seton Hall the last weekend of the regular season before the world shut down. Big crowd that day, packed in here. Jays fans were in full throat. It was a fun atmosphere, speaking of someone who's in that building that day. It was a fun afternoon here in Omaha, Nebraska. Or Bjarnerson, I think, expected McGowan's to get to the rim. 
did not. And Mahoney took it away. Good job of scouting on the out of bounds situation by the crate. And Mahoney with a deep two to stretch the crate and lead to four. Gordy Arneson. Pass deflected. But it went right into the hands of Woodrow Ogo. Can't score it against Bishop and Zegarowski with a loose ball. Mahoney, the three. McGowan's closed quickly to contest, and Thorbjörn Anderson the rebound. Nice help. Excellent team defense by Bishop there. Stevenson lost the handle on that ball on the way in. Thorbjörn Anderson, deep three, rolls off, and the rebound to the corner in Zegarowski. Back out to Mahoney, another three up, this one off. And Nebraska going the other way, and there's a foul as Bishop and McGowan's got tangled up. That's not a bad foul for McGowan's to draw. That's number two on Christian Bishop. And McGowan's did almost the identical thing twice against Georgia Tech. He did his Frank Costanza. He stopped short. He got ahead and slowed down, and in this case, gets tripped up. Looks like he might have been going down before the contact, but regardless, we'll go the other way because, as you mentioned, going into the break, Kevin, both teams now will be in the bonus through the end of the half. So free throws the rest of the way. That has not necessarily been a great proposition, as you mentioned earlier, Sean, for this Nebraska team as the front end of the one and one is no good. And Bishop, still on the floor with those two fouls, gets the rebound. Good job by McGowan to forcing really good defense by McGowan. Kevin, he beat Bishop to a spot, then forced him out, and then the poor passing angle leads to a turnover. But you want to beat a guy to his comfort spot. Good job by McGowan of getting low, and then an improper passing angle completes the play. But it started with McGowan pushing Creighton away from a solid entry fee. Well, you can see the experience McGowan got in the ACC playing against yep. athletic bigs like Christian Bishop. Shamil Stevenson on the baseline gets past Jacob Epperson and Stevenson on the board brings the Huskers within two. Legorowski trying to turn the corner and draws the foul on Stevenson. He'll go to the line. How about the change of pace? Legorowski, but here, Stevenson, there's no doubt what he's doing with it. I mean, he is going straight to the rim. And then watch it, what he does. He takes away the opportunity for the shot block by going to the other side of the rim, utilizing the left hand and having that rim shield the defender. It's a difficult cover for Jacob Epperson, who did not play in the Kansas game, in part because his knees were sore, and in part because it's a difficult matchup at Kansas, and Nebraska is similarly sized to what Kansas has. And Coach McDermott saying this week that he just, you know, there were a couple of reasons why Jacob Epperson didn't play. But you wonder if Nebraska's not going to try to attack him again. Much like we saw earlier, Creighton trying to go at Udra Ogo on the perimeter. You might see the same thing here with Steven. Playing with Kobe Webster out there on the edge, and that three won't go. Zegarowski's pass intercepted, and that's the length of Banton that got in the way. Stevenson. And that yep. three way off the mark. Stevenson 0 for 6 from deep this year. Sometimes there's a reason you're open, Kevin. Me specifically, that was never in doubt. Zegarowski with the three. When he's open, it's usually going down. And Marcus Zegarowski with 14 first half points. He and Mahoney have combined for 22 first half points. Stevenson. I mean, what, what are you doing? I mean, you're 0 for 7. I understand that eventually you want to knock down a three. But your, your basket a couple possessions ago was at the rim. So go right back to your bread and butter and force Epperson to come out on you and then try to beat him off the dribble. Instead, Stevenson leaves and Lat Mayen back on the floor with two fouls to try to give Nebraska an offensive spark. Jay's starting to stretch this one a little bit. Up seven with 9.18 to play in the first. Now, if Epperson is guarding Mayen on the other end of the floor, let's see if they try to exploit that and pull Epperson out and see if Mayen can maybe knock down a three. Nice job again by McGowan. Really good defense. Outstanding. McGowan's now will push it. Doesn't have numbers. Doesn't care. Goes into the teeth of the defense, and that ball out of bounds to the Huskers. McGowan's trying to get to the rim. 
actually had the ball stripped before it got sent out with that block. But a good job defensively by McGowan's. I've really been impressed, not just here this evening, but in the games that you and I had earlier in Lincoln. He is just a really good defender, not just on the perimeter, but also in the post. And that's a travel for McGowan's and the turnover to the Blue Jays. This is just the start of a big rivalry night on the Big Ten Network. The doubleheader will roll on as National Player of the Year contender Luca Garza leads number three Iowa against Iowa State. Big Ten basketball powered by Unleaded 88 continues next on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. Creighton with a seven point lead here in Omaha. Ballock deep from three. Long rebound to Banton. And for Banton, his second board of the first half. Teddy Allen working, pocket picked by Ballock. Again, they know he wants to get back to that right hand, and they jumped it. That's the second time they've been able to strip it with the spin. And the hands of McGowan's to tip that one out of bounds. Creighton keeps the possession. McGowan's will get a breather now. Thorby Arnerson back in for the Huskers. Ryan Kalkbrenner back in for the Jays, a seven-foot freshman. And Epperson will sit down. Zagorowski checking his feet, making sure he was in bounds on the catch. And the Jays will inbound again. Hard to have a better start to a night than Marcus Zagorowski has had. Three for four from the floor, three of three from deep, five of five at the line. And has shown change of pace, solid fundamental footwork, stepping into a shot. Really been impressive. Working against Mayen, who has two fouls. Zagorowski left that one short. Mayen with the rebound, and Zagorowski will pick up his first personal, and Mayen to the other end for a one-on-one. -on -one. And a good job by Mayen of keeping Zagorowski in front. You could tell that Zagorowski wanted to get to the rim, but Mayen gave him, Mayen gave him just enough of a berth, kept him in front, and then contested. Nice job, especially with two fouls. Man, four for seven on the year. Hasn't had a lot of opportunities yet at the line. But he gets the bonus here. And that ends a two and a half minute scoring drought for the Huskers. Excellent shooting for him. The one thing as Mayan continues his career in Lincoln, they could put on some film of Zagorowski and show him in this regard, Kevin, be shot ready. Because the one thing you'll notice with Mayan is that he's not always shot ready. Sometimes he catches it with his knees locked. He has to jump down or bend down to get into a shooting motion. And with uh, people coming out with the outstanding scouting reports that they have, the more he's shot ready, the more effective he'll be. And to your point, I don't know that in three years of watching Marcus Zagorowski at Creighton, I've ever seen him not shot ready. Certainly has been tonight. Mahoney. On the baseline, not going to go. Woodrow-Ogle battling for the rebound. Nice block out there. Allen curling, driving inside. The extra pass, Kobe Webster open for three. They can't find the range. He had it the other night, and he had it here against the Jays in 2018 when he was with Western Illinois and put up 24 points and grabbed 10 rebounds. Fifteen on the shot clock. Zagorowski. Scooping toward the rim. Kalkbrenner there to try to follow. And batting it off the glass is Banton. The rebounding was also an issue for Nebraska last year. They were minus 10 per ball game. In the cellar in that category, but they have improved that so far this year. About even. Allen off the fake, driving inside. Teddy Allen gets to the rim for a pair. Now he was under control, and he utilized the crossover, and then got his shoulder by the larger player, Cochran. He's got seven in this first half, despite being saddled with two fouls. A little life on the Husker bench right now. Within three, as Mahoney's three pinballs in and out. And Allen with his second rebound. 24-21, Allen driving end to end to the rim. And it's a one point game in Omaha and a timeout taken by the Blue Jays. Twice, Teddy Allen has attacked the inside foot. First on the right hand side, here on the left hand side in transition. Watch him attack that inside foot. All you have to do is get your shoulder by the player regardless of his size. Teddy Allen putting on a little bit of display here in Omaha. 
Teddy Allen bringing the Huskers back into this game. Last two possessions, he's been able to get to the rim. He knocked down a three to open his scoring barrage, but a good job of getting his shoulder by the defender right here. Really smart. They spread the floor in transition. That was the basket that sent us to break, and scoring is something that this young man can do. He leads the squad here at Nebraska at 17 per outing and a big time 30 point plus score a year ago at the junior college level. Pretty good response by the Huskers. Creighton had opened up the 24-17 lead, but a 6-0 run for Nebraska and Creighton over their last six from the floor. Here's Jefferson trying to change that shot blocked inside, but Kochbrenner is there. And that breaks the Husker spell. And with six minutes to go in the first half, a three point Blue Jay lead. Here's Allen. Feed in the hot hand, double comes, and back out to Thorbe Arnerson. Webster, penetration, had to change his shot, got it over the seven-footer, and dropped it. And got low with the crossover dribble, Kevin. That's what allowed him to get just enough of the corner turn to put up the high arc. How about Woodrow coming in for the block? Webster toeing the line for the three. That won't go, and the rebound tipped to Banton. Banton off the window draws the foul, and he'll go to the line with a chance to give the Huskers the lead. Watch the shot pick, and then getting low, that crossover, and then understanding that the shot blocker is coming over, and just a really difficult conversion by Webster. But the reason he was able to turn the corner there, Kevin, you have to believe at the scouting report, Creighton was talking about, look, he's coming off an outstanding performance from behind the arc, six of seven, close out under control. Shot fake, and then boom. Really good. And Watch where his eyes are the entire time. Even as his body is going to the floor, his eyes are on the target. We are tied at 26. Last year at halftime, Creighton led 48 to 22. So a little different year, at least on this night, for the visitors from Lincoln. Zegarowski. Jones backs it out with eight on the shot clock. Called out for the screen. Now lobs it to Kalkbrenner to the rim, and he'll go to the line for one more. Nice job of spreading the floor, flipping the floor, forcing Nebraska, who for long periods of time did a pretty good job defensively. But the most important part of that play was the timing. If Kalkbrenner doesn't go, if he goes too quickly, there's no way that he's able to get there. The timing was impeccable. You put it up there where the big fella can go and get it. That's an impressive play, especially for a first-year player. Second foul on Woodrowogo, so that's two on Allen, two on Woodrowogo, two on Mayen for the Huskers. Can't convert the three-point play. Kalkbrenner will head up the floor. His team up two. Draogo, the handoff. Allen going to work again. Contested shot won't go. Got his own. Puts it in. He'll go to the line for a chance at a three-point play. Kevin, you can say a lot about Teddy Allen, but suffering from confidence is not one. <laughs> I mean, he puts this thing up, but watch what he does. He knows it's off. It goes right after it and gets it with two hands, keeps his eye on the basket, and converts. You know, we, we talked to Coach Hoiberg at their season opener, and he said, you know what? The more difficult the shot, the higher his percentage, and there's a greater example right there. He said he's better contested than uncontested as a shooter. But, you know, any guy who makes shots, and Fred Hoiberg was a guy who made shots, the highest praise you can give to someone is he's a tough shot maker. And that's what he said about Teddy Allen. This guy is a tough shot maker, and that is an example of a tough shot. And remember, he's playing with two fouls, yeah. too. Huskers with a 29-28 lead. Mahoney, nice baseline back. cut, Jones with the easy two. They did that a number of times against Kansas. If you are Nebraska, they've done a pretty good job of taking that away from Creighton. Good example of dribbling at your teammate. That's an automatic dive, be it from the wing or the corner. Thorby Arnerson with the open three at the top, and the Huskers answer back, and they're up by a pair. Good first half here in Omaha. Mahoney. Entry to Jefferson. Jefferson. And a foul is going to be called on McGowan's, and that's two on Trey McGowan's. 
And that'll take us to a timeout. The Huskers finding their range from deep, Sean. And the three-point shot has become available because they've been able to get to the rim. Nice job, nice rotation by the left-hander. Nebraska impressive in Omaha. Now, of the many things that happened in 2020, not having the College World Series in Omaha hurt the city, hurt the fans, hurt all of us who love the event at TD Ameritrade Park, which is right across the street from where we are in downtown Omaha. 70 years Omaha has been the home of the College World Series. We look forward to gathering there again in June of 2021. Free throw not going to go. We'll draw Ogo with the rebound. Huskers hang on to the two-point lead. And creating an outstanding foul shooting squad. 74% as a team. So far, just five of nine tonight. Pass tipped into the corner. We'll draw Ogo. You might want to go help him out there. Double comes. And the youngster in trouble. But a foul is going to be called. I believe Kalkbrenner just picked up his second. Yeah, Nebraska really caught a break there because... Udrogo was out of his comfort zone offensively in the corner. There was no one over there for him to pass the ball to, so he had to put the ball on the floor. I think if Kalkbrenner just puts his hands up, that's going to be a walk. Instead, after the second foul on Kalkbrenner, that's two on Kalkbrenner, two on Mitchell, two on Bishop for the Jays. Udrogo in that one at the rim, and that one ends up short. 5 of 11 this year for the sophomore post for the Huskers. Ten team fouls against the Jays. Huskers' next foul will put them at 10 as well. So free throws of plenty over the final 335 with every foul. with their largest lead of this very tightly contested first half. Zagorowski on the penetration finds Mahoney for the open three. Not going to go. Rebound inside. Jefferson stays with it for two. And a good job by Kalkbrenner of keeping it alive. He wasn't able to get two hands on it, but he kept it alive until his teammates able to come in and clean it up. Corby Arnerson to Teddy Allen. <laughs> Allen has his pocket picked by Denzel Mahoney. Mahoney. Lost the dribble, got it back, and has two more. He's got 10 and a timeout taken by Nebraska. The live ball turnover turns into two and a Creighton lead. And Mahoney did an outstanding job. He got down low on that crossover attempt by Teddy Allen. Watch him get low. He gets over the top and watch where his hands are. They are down low. His eyes are on the midsection. He knows that Allen can't give him all that eyewash up top if he keeps his eye on the number and watch the hands right there. He understands the crossover is coming. He comes with the inside hand. That leads to the transition opportunity on the other end for Creighton. Wonderful job by last season's Big East Sixth Man of the Year. Began his career at Southeast Missouri State. Didn't get eligible till mid-season after transferring in, but what a boost he gave to the Jays, especially in conference play, Sean, where he ended the year hitting 30 of his last 31 free throws. So in other words, add into his four for four this year, he's hit 34 of his last 35 attempts at the foul line. Doesn't get there a ton because he's such a good outside shooter, but when he does, he converts. 10 points in this first half for Mahoney. And a 34-33 lead for the Blue Jays. Shamil Stevenson back on the floor for the Big Red. Who admittedly don't show a lot of red in their uniforms tonight. There's a smidge, there's a bit, there's enough, a taste. Banton trying to save it, but he's out of bounds. And another turnover for the Huskers. It's number 11 in this first half. And Kevin, Nebraska very fortunate that that did not become a live ball turnover because with the attempted save, there were two Creighton players right there. If he doesn't step on the line, it might have been a basket going the other way. Instead, Creighton will work in the half court now with Zagorowski. And he'll launch from deep, and he'll hit from deep. Four for four from three. He's got 17 in the first half. And how about reading the play? They had the big fella, Rugerogo, out there on a switch. He understood. He kept his dribble alive. Here's Woodrow, go run into the rim, but he took an extra step. Was he surprised to find yeah. himself as open as he was? I think that was exactly what happened. 
12 Husker turnovers. Jays have 12 points off the previous 11. We'll see what they do with this one with 2.27 remaining in the first half. Creighton on a 7-0 run. They've hit their last three shots. Zagorowski driving the ship again. Mahoney, baseline jumper falls. Mahoney with 12. Zagorowski and Mahoney with 29 of the Jays' 39. Excellent set by Creighton offensively. Good job by Zagorowski in the open floor delivering it. And the hands by Nebraska take it back. Allen motoring to the other end against Kalkbrenner, and that bucket will fall. Eddie Allen. And he could play through contact, Kevin. Four point game. Mahoney curling to the rim, doesn't get the roll. Rebound batted around. It'll belong to the Jays with 143 left in the half. Two possessions ago. Nice job by Zagorowski, but the favor is returned by Teddy Allen in the open floor. Puts his shoulder to the rim. That's so important with a larger player. Verticality was maintained, but you put your shoulder into him, that negates the height, and then he uses the backboard. Good job in transition by Teddy Allen. And Kalkbrenner aware of the two fouls he's playing with. Didn't want to pick up that third. He leaves now as Epperson comes back out on the floor. And Woodrow Ogo will check in and give Teddy Allen a breather, maybe to preserve him from getting his third foul. He has had the hot hand, though, 14 in the first half for Teddy Allen. Nice bounce back after the struggles against Georgia Tech, where he's just 4 of 16 from the floor. 14 to shoot for Mahoney. Open three, and he'll hit that one. That's his first made three since the first half against Kansas. He was 0 for 3 in the second half, was 0 for 2 before that one, and now Ballock with a block. And now Ballock, does he have the hot hand? A little hesitation. Nice back out to Mahoney for the open three, and it grazes the iron. Well, that was still pretty basketball. Mm. You kick it ahead, you get the defense shifted one way, then you kick it back to the trail that just came up empty. There aren't going to be many teams in college basketball that you're better on the break than the Creighton Blue Jays. The three by Banton rattles home. He's hit two from deep tonight. And the Huskers back within four. Mahoney, a quick jumper. That one blocked by Banton. It was a two-for-one opportunity, so the Jays will get one last shot, assuming the Huskers don't get an offensive rebound. Twenty-five seconds until halftime. Anton on the drive, lost the handle on the ball on the way up, and that'll be a foul. Ballock with the foul a moment ago. Banton from deep. Good job by Banton of stepping in. And you saw Mahoney kind of goading him into it. He doesn't come out hands high. And again, Kevin, you talked about it earlier. We've talked about it in the games that we've had with Nebraska. He's such an intriguing player because of his length. If you don't come out with your hand high, he's going to be able to shoot over and have a good vision at the basket for just about any defender the opposition puts on him. 11 in the first half for Banton. 42-39, Creighton's lead three. Jays will have likely the last shot here. As he rattles home that second free throw, they will. Zagorowski will bring it up for the final 15 seconds. Last year, Creighton led 48-22 at the break. And Mahoney stayed in bounds somehow, drives it to the rim, don't go. Tries to throw it up and a foul with one second until halftime. That will send Mahoney to the line. And Delano Banton with his first. The play started with Mahoney having to channel his inner Walenda, tight roping the end line there. And then just breaking verticality right at the end, bails him out. Watch right here. Excellent job. Now the Nebraska bench, they're pointing at the end line. The official says he was inbounds. Regardless, it was an outstanding athletic play to save a turnover. I have a feeling if you're wearing blue goggles as you watch this game, you said, oh, he was in all the way. If you've got the red glasses on, oh, that heel was out of bounds. Good on both. Banton inbounds. Thorby Arnerson, three-quarter court shot. This is not going to count if it goes. It does not go. Halftime is here. So from 48-22 last year, 
to 44-40, Creighton by four this year at the half. Good first half for both of these teams. It really was, but if you're Nebraska, you have to be concerned with some of the early foul trouble. A lot of their key players battling some foul issues. Legorowski showing you why he's one of the elite players, not just in the Big East, but nationally as well. And Teddy Allen making his presence known. Nebraska hanging tough on the road. Basketball on the Big Ten Network is brought to you by State Farm. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. In between Lincoln and Omaha is where you'll find the Lee G. Simmons Conservation Park and Wildlife Safari. It was a popular spot during the course of some of the shutdowns because you could go out there and drive through to see the animals at the Wildlife Safari. Lots of things going on out there, most of them involving animals. So we're really not sure what the motivation is behind it, but it's probably food. And the circle of life continues. Yes, it does. Hakuna Matata, Sean Morris. <laughs> Marcus Zagorowski will start things off in the second half. Blue Jays up by four. Malak looking to go baseline. Back up top to Jefferson. Jefferson against Payton to the rim. And a good job of clearing out that side of the floor. You saw them vacate it. That allowed Jefferson to operate one-on-one -on -one and convert with a strong hand. At Mayen, there's McGowan. McGowan's going behind the back with the dribble, draws the contact and the foul. Well, spacing is such an important part if you want to play in the open floor or in the half court. Now watch, they cleared out that side of the floor. That takes all the help side defense, isolating Banton. Jefferson able to turn the corner and convert. And then Banton kind of returns the favor here. Nice job. A lot of times guys, again, dribbling with the purpose. Sometimes guys will go behind the back and they don't go anywhere. McGowan shows you that it does have an effective and efficient use. Well, and the effective use, not only getting to the free throw line, but getting Christian Bishop on the bench with three personal fouls. Bishop averaging 14 and a half points per game. He came in as the Jays' leading scorer. Double figures in all games this year. He's got two tonight. Also, their leading rebounder at about six per out. Nebraska's more than happy to see him spend time on the bench in the second half. Five-point lead for the Blue Jays. Malak looking inside. Nothing in there with 10 to shoot as Denzel Mahoney will navigate. Here's Balak. Got Allen in the air. The no look to Mahoney, and the three not going to go. Mayen looking for the rebound and a foul on Damian Jefferson. That is his second. And a good job by Mayen of blocking out at the beginning of that sequence. Kalkbrenner, about 6'11". Mayen really playing the five right now for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Got his body in to the larger Blue Jay. Second leading rebounder on this Husker team. Platt Mayen over six rebounds a game. Go back out to Allen. Had the hot hand late in that first half. Good defense by the Jays. And they're going to try to clear out and allow Teddy Allen to go. He'll launch the contested three, and it's off the heel. Mayen trying to tip the rebound out. There's Allen to get it. Allen scoops it to the rim. No, the tip won't go. And the rebound by Damian Jefferson. Jefferson accelerating, working inside against Allen, and he got it to fall. And I thought Jefferson might have got away with a little bit of a clear out with that inside arm to create that space. I believe Fred Hoiberg thought that as well. That prompted a shout or two from the sideline as that pass is deflected into the arms of Mahoney. Jays on the run. Zegarowski blocked by Banton on the baseline. And right through the hands of Kalkbrenner at a turnover to the Huskers. The last basket, and watch the inside arm right there. Thought Jefferson might have gotten away with a little bit of a clear out, but much like being at home, Kevin, my opinion means nothing. <laughs> Usually you see with that arm getting the extension, that call. Not in that instance. In that case, the official was straight lined, meaning that he did not have the uh, angle because he had a player right in front of him and obscured his vision. McGowan's three brings the Huskers back within four. Good duck in. Really good job of understanding the size mismatch enjoyed by Kaufman. McGowan's doing a good job of getting his feet set. 
Boy, if they can get that from him on a consistent basis with what he provides defensively, he is going to be an impact player for Coach Fred Hoiberg. Third foul on Lat Mayan. And Trita Mahoney against McGowan's. Mahoney, nice little up and under move. Couldn't get the shot to go. And a good job by McGowan's of maintaining verticality. Really good job defensively. Oh my goodness, Trey McGowan's exploding to the rim to bring the Huskers within two. How about that sequence by McGowan's? It starts on the defensive end of the floor and the conversion on the other end. Mahoney, and there's the answer from Kalkbrenner. And a good job by Mahoney of putting the pass where Kalkbrenner, the freshman, could do something with it. It was right at the numbers so he could catch and complete. Allen's. Here's Allen. Going baseline. Got past Mahoney. Couldn't get it to fall. Battling for the rebound. Kalkbrenner at seven feet, able to pull it down. Mahoney open in the corner. That oh. three falls, and Denzel Mahoney right in from deep. He's got 17 and a timeout, Nebraska. Great job by Mahoney of getting his feet set. By Zegarowski, delivered it right into his shooting pocket. And that dunk a moment ago by McGowan's end to end. The Big Ten standout presented by Auto Owners Insurance. Defense turning to offense, turning to a highlight, and a Big Ten standout for Trey McGowan. But the Huskers find themselves down seven in Omaha. 53-46, Creighton has tied its largest lead of the ball game with 16-28 remaining. Alongside Sean Morris, I'm Kevin Kugler. Omaha, Nebraska on a Friday night for Creighton and the Huskers. Lat Mayans three is rejected. Zagorowski will start it up the floor. Here comes Jefferson. A lob inside. Nice catch and finish by the freshman Ryan Kalkbrenner. And that, this sequence is going to pay dividends for Creighton, not just tonight, but moving forward. Because you can see the confidence of that freshman starting to rise because of his impact on both ends. Orby Arnerson to the rim. Breaks the 7-0 Creighton run. Zagorowski. Jefferson, yep. and a little too tall for Denzel Mahoney, and the turnover back to the Huskers and a timeout. Nice job in the open floor of coming under control and then understanding that man was in foul trouble, good entry feed, create space, keep the ball high and complete. Good job by the freshman. Well, everybody knows the legacy of Bob Gibson was on the baseball diamond. The Omaha native, though, played basketball for the Creighton Blue Jays. It was very good. 20 points per game in his Creighton time. Was actually under contract for both the Harlem Globetrotters and the St. Louis Cardinals, but then he said, you know what? I might be okay at baseball. And the Omaha native was okay at baseball. When, you're, when they changed the rules yes. to stop you from being as great as you are and you're still great, that's what happened with Bob Gibson, who passed away earlier this year, October 2nd. One of the all-time greats, not only in Creighton history, but in the history of sport. Certainly in the history of baseball. And there's the Gibson number, 1954 to 1957. Up Gibson, terrific on the court and a legend on the mound. And because of his dominance, Major League Baseball lowered the mound. To your point about changing the rules, kind of like George Mikan and Wilt Chamberlain in basketball. Boy, Wilt Chamberlain, George Mike, an impersonation. Ryan Kalkbrenner can't convert there. Seven point lead. Oscar's trying to not turn it over again as Teddy Allen will leave it back up for Banton, looking for his third three of the night. That went off the mark. Mahoney pushing up the floor. Mahoney driving inside, offensive foul. Denzel Mahoney, his second. As Lap Mayan with three fouls stood in there and took the contact. How about the gutsy defensive play by Mayan? And what draws the attention of the official? Watch the inside shoulder right there, the dip of the shoulder, and people at home may be saying, hey, Mayan was still moving. It doesn't matter. He has squared up, and once you lower the shoulder, as Mahoney does right there, and you show your hands, as Mayan did, good job in transition defense, especially with three fouls. 
Stanton to Thorby Arnerson now. Huskers down seven. Here's McGowan's. He'll pull up for a three. And he'll hit Trey McGowan's into double figures with 10. And Nebraska back within four. Well, he shot that confidently. Excellent backspin. And again, if they can get someone of a consistent three-point shot for McGowan's with what he brings defensively. He is going to be impactful, not just here, but in conference play as well. Fourth game in double figures this year for McGowan's. Jefferson. Oh, Ballock left alone in the corner. That's a mistake defensively by the Huskers. And a good job of holding the screen and then flaring out to the corner. If he does that too quickly, again, we talked about it earlier at the basket, timing is so important. You're one of the best three-point shooters in a program's history, like Ballock is, as the pocket is picked nice. by Jefferson and then able to stay with it. You can't leave Ballock open like that if you're a Husker defender, and they did. Here comes Zagorowski going end-to-end. -end. Mahoney in the corner, the open three, and back-to-back -back open corner threes have the Jays with their largest lead, 61-51. to 51. Doing a nice job of spreading the floor in space. Here's Allen. Allen, tough pull up, stayed with it, and out of bounds, back to Creighton again. 61-51, Jays. This rip starts with Trey McGowan stepping confidently into a three, but then a really good job of flaring out to the corner. If he does that too soon, it throws off the timing of the play. You see the spacing of the white jerseys for Creighton. Nebraska in a scramble situation on a back-to-back -back possessions, they find the bottom of the well from three. Denzel Mahoney at 19 at Kansas, has 20 tonight. Talk about a good week. Zagorowski, back to it after dribbling it off his foot. Good job by McGowan's of taking away. Creighton wanted to go back to that same sequence, but McGowan's took it away in the corner. Zagorowski will turn the corner. He'll play it in for points number 18 and 19 on the night. McGowan's. Thorby Arnerson will leave it for McGowan's, who gets the two. And that stops the 8 0 Creighton run. Good job by Thorby Arnerson of utilizing the shot fake and then a good lead for McGowan's. The skip, Ballock alone in the corner again. This one pinballs out. Kalkbrenner, second chance, gets him to the line. And that's on Mayan, and that's his fourth. Great, doing a nice job of setting the offensive tone. Watch him turn the corner, keep his shoulder down, and then you see Kalkbrenner doing just enough to get in the way because he held his ground. That did not allow the weak side help to get over there and more effectively contest the shot by Zagorowski. They changed that foul. It was initially signaled on Mayen, which would have been his fourth, but they changed it to Thorby Arnerson, which is his first. So a fortuitous change at the scorer's table that benefits Nebraska. Mayen sits down anyway. I'll tell you what, the future is very bright for this young man at the foul line for the Creighton Blue Jays. You take a look at his line tonight. Eight points on four of seven shooting, six rebounds, making his impact known on the defensive end of the floor as well with a couple of blocks. He's going to get bigger, he's going to get stronger, but he can move up and down the floor. Keep an eye on that young guy in the Big East Conference. Yeah, he's been very productive in limited minutes for the Jays this year as he sits down. The Jays go small. Nine points for Kalkbrenner. McGowan's driving in that defense, and it's taken away by Mahoney. Here comes Mitchell on the push ahead to Jefferson, and he's moving on up for two more. He says, take that, Wheezy, in the open floor, doing a really good job of spreading and running to the wings. They didn't run in straight lines. They took proper angle. Beautiful transition basketball. 13-point advantage. Stevenson spinning inside. Huskers in a precarious spot here. Webster trying to lob it down low. Udraogo has it stripped. Eight to shoot. Timeout on the floor. You don't have to utilize spacing just in the half court. Watch, you go out, you get a wide angle. Good job of going from defense to offense. You hit, you plant, you don't run in straight lines. It's paying dividends for Creighton here at home. I always love the time of year where we start to see conference action showing up on the calendar or in this case, the promo. 
laid off to a nice start this year. Good win this week, too. And a nice recovery after blowing a 19-point lead against Seton Hall. They go on the road and beat a very talented Virginia Tech squad handle. Mitchell in transition with the three. Sharif Mitchell's first three. And the Jays starting to heat this one up. 69-53, up 16. 14-2 run over the last two minutes and 45 seconds. Good job of being there on the catch. Really nice job by Creighton defensively. Stevenson got his man in the air. Couldn't convert on the first or the second. And Stevenson trying to get it for a third opportunity. It's out of bounds, and the Jays will inbound. Just such a nice job by Creighton. You understand that Kobe Webster in the ball game to try to stretch you out defensively from behind the arc. Six of seven from deep. They close out under control and make him put the ball on the floor. Good, solid team defense by the Creighton Blue Jays. Jays shooting 67% in the second half. Four of six from three while holding the Huskers to 33%. Mahoney. Oh, wide open. Antoine Jones for a pair. Just a breakdown in communication of that high ball screen action by Nebraska. That allowed the slip, and you know, Mahoney didn't even really have a clean handle on the ball, but still was able to deliver. 16-2, great run. Huskers trying to find something offensively. McGowan's has been able to provide it, but not this time. Jefferson able to grab the loose ball. Mahoney to Jones in transition. That three falls. Five of seven from deep in the second half. And the Jays have blown it open with 10-20 to go. Creighton up by 21. Doing a wonderful job are the Creighton Blue Jays of sprinting, finding their spots. And most importantly, they're not just sprinting. They're sprinting with a purpose and spacing out the floor. And they've done a nice job of leading shooters into their shot. What I mean by that, Kevin, Watch right here. Good job of misdirection dribble, and then you kick it back. Boom, and it leads them right into the shooting pocket. Actually, that wasn't the one I was thinking about. <laughs> it's going to happen. But a nice job of spreading the floor here. You get the defense going one way. You have a breakdown in communication. Wide open. But that slip was made available because they have spread out Nebraska defensively finding open three-point shooters, and much like you saw the delivery on the post feed, in transition offense, they've done a nice job of leading the shooter into a shot, be it on the left wing or the right. Well, don't forget, we've got a busy night tonight on the Big Ten Network. Big Ten basketball powered by Unleaded 88 continues. Tip-off at 9-12 Eastern between the Iowa State Cyclones and the third-ranked Iowa Hawkeyes. It's coming up next on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. And in addition, to Luca Garza and what you know you're going to get from him. Iowa State has to be very cognizant of the three-point marksmanship of the Hawkeyes. They dropped 17 triples on North Carolina in the Big Ten ACC Challenge. I would say Jordan Bohannon looks pretty good again. Good to have him back after the injury last year. That Hawkeye team is loaded. One thing, you know, we talk a lot about this Creighton offense, Sean. But an unsung part of the development of this Creighton team this year has been their defense, allowing 64 points per game. And John Niatawa, who is the Creighton beat writer for the Omaha World Herald, he did some math and pointed out that Kansas against the Creighton starters, as Webster launches a contested three that's way off, Kansas against the Creighton starters averaged under .73 per possession. And when the Jays get the offense that they have there with Bishop paired with that defense, they're almost unstoppable. And how about in transition, the bounce pass with a purpose and led the recipient right into his shot. That's beautiful transition offense. Then they followed up with a great defensive sequence. It starts with a poor shot. They're trying to get Webster going. But watch the white jersey sprint. Head up, and then watch where this bounce pass is. Boom. You lead him right into the shot at the waist where he can do something with it. That's beautiful basketball. 13-0 Creighton run. Bishop, back out. Pallet thought about that one. That would not be the first he shot from that range in his career. 
Jones, the no look to Mitchell, seven to shoot. Sharif Mitchell off the window. 23 to two. Creighton has outscored Nebraska in the last four and a half minutes. And Mitchell turns the corner and Teddy Allen kind of reached out haphazardly with his hand. That allowed the clean path to the rim and the conversion off the window. Banton cannot get the roll and the rebound may have been touched out and it was by Christian Bishop and it'll stay with the Huskers. Stream every Big Ten Network game on the Fox Sports app presented by Auto Owners Insurance. Download today on your smartphone, tablet, and connected devices. And the lob in to Latmayan. Webster gets past Zagorowski, draws the foul and we'll have a chance to break the 15-0 Creighton run at the line. Good job by Webster of attacking that inside foot defensively on Zagorowski and able to get to the opposite side of the basket to hopefully, if you're in Nebraska, stem the tide here being put forth by the Creighton Blue Jays. One more for Webster and there's the frustration from the head coach. For two on that trip. 12 of 21 tonight at the line for the Huskers, 57%. 15 straight points as part of that 23 to 2 run. Jones to the rim, no. Rebound tipped around to Webster. He'll push it up to Allen. One on one against Ballock. The step through and the finger roll breaks the run. Good job by Allen of avoiding the charge attempt. Stepping around with a little bit of a version of the Euro step. Zagorowski got a step on Stevenson. And that's a whistle and a turnover. Zagorowski with the travel. Go back to that bucket by Teddy Allen. Nice job by Teddy Allen of understanding the Creighton's trying to draw the charge. You can see right there, he steps through. Good job, a much needed basket by the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Huskers have been outscored 34 to 15 in the second half. Four point game at halftime. And Nearly a live ball. It is a live ball turnover. Bishop going to the other end. And Bishop with a windmill. Helping to blow the Huskers out of Omaha. Bant. Out to Allen. Open three falls for Teddy Allen. He's got 19. to the other end of the floor. Offensive foul, Lap Mayen now with his fourth personal foul and a timeout on the floor. Devin, it's appropriate that a Creighton Blue Jay says fly on Freebird and sending it in. Bishop, checkmate in the open floor for Creighton and they have it going offensively here in Omaha. Creighton with an 80-58 lead. 7.22 remaining in the second half with Sean Morris. I'm Kevin Kugler. A 25-4 run in the second half. The difference in this ball game took a four-point halftime game and has blown it open in the second half. And the thing that just really impresses me about Creighton, yes, their defense has been pretty stout, but offensively, watch how hard they cut and move without the basketball, and there's a great example of it. As you speak of it, that cut by Bishop and the bounce from Zagorowski, and it's 82-58. It's a pretty simple game, Kevin, or they wouldn't let me near it. <laughs> Teddy Allen will start it up for Nebraska. And a turnover by the Huskers, their 21st of the ball game. Go back to that cut, Sean. A little bit. The foot hits the three-point line. Teddy Allen gets caught ball watching. That foot hits the three-point line. It's a backdoor cut. Watch right here. Boom. Gone. Defender loses him. Send it in. 
Well, and it's clear how well these guys know each other. Zegarowski, Bishop, they're both in their junior season. They've played together for a while. You've got Mahoney who came in mid-season last year. A lot of talent with Damian Jefferson trying and hitting from deep. And the Jays, once it starts, it's an avalanche. There's just no stopping. And especially when you put the ball consistently in the shooting pocket. And they've done that. Trey McGowan's has had a nice night as he hits the three. 85-61, McGowan's with 15. Zagorowski, Allen got out on the quick. Mitchell, floater on the baseline, won't go. Bishop's trying, no, and a foul is going to be called on Bishop, his fourth. Let's go back to the shooting pocket for the Jays. They just do such a nice job of leading the shooter right into a shot. Watch what that is. Boom. Catch and release. They consistently, Kevin, put the ball in a position where the recipient can do something positive with it. That's what I'm talking about with the shooting pocket. If that's on the left side of his body, he has to regroup and then go up. Here, it's already there. Catch, go into your motion. The Jays will lose a few games this year when they shoot 13 of 25 from three-point land. Another takeaway, turnover number 22 for Nebraska. Zegarowski in transition, got an open look from three. He is five for six from deep. He's got 22, an 88-61 Creighton lead. And how about the nonverbal communication in the open floor? They made eye contact, and he left it right where he could convert. In the corner, Webster with the answer for the Huskers. For Kobe Webster, kind of a rough night, one for seven before that shot. And his first made three. Nice flare. Rotation around to Jefferson. Mitchell, 15 on the shot clock. Mitchell regathers, and Udrao go there to swat it out of bounds with 10 to shoot. You can see the contact, nonverbal contact right there. You slow up, Zegarowski does, and he gives it right to him. Hey, Marcus, wait for the screen. And for kids at home, you want to see how to shoot a basketball? Textbook. Eye on the target, watch the follow through, the backspin, and you know the result. There he is from two, that one a little strong. Rebound, Thorby Arnerson. Huskers trying to run. Allen regathered in traffic. Got his own miss, puts it back up and in. Teddy Allen with 21. 23 his best as a Husker. Now Bishop to work. Muscled that one up between two Husker defenders. That was tough, because I thought Wudorogo had done a pretty good job defensively, but Bishop's still able to complete the play. Here's Allen, he was calling for it. Yeah, he's gonna get an offensive foul. Oh boy, I thought he had one right there. Got the clearance to get the shot, and he's tied his Husker high with 23. I mean, he was gonna get to that left shoulder. And you can see that much dip, you usually have a chip around. <laughs> 4.07 to go in this second half. It's all been Creighton in this second half. Jefferson, a little strong. Bishop battling for the rebound, and that's a foul on this end of the floor against the Huskers at a timeout in Omaha. For the great Blue Jays, some talent dotting the roster over the years. Paul Silas, the all-time rebounding king. Benoit Benjamin, the all-time shot block king. Kyle Korver still going, 371 three-pointers. And the headband's son, Doug McDermott, 3,150 points. He's not here tonight, but his alma mater is still scoring big. Everything we've seen from this Creighton team in the early stages of this 2020-2021 season says they are well placed in that top 10. They certainly deserve to be there. And they deserve to be there because they are relentless. Look, they have, it's been kind of a series of body blows in the first half. Nebraska did a good job of getting back and getting situated defensively, but the Blue Jays are just so relentless. When they don't have the ball, they're cutting hard, cutting with a purpose, and that wears down a team on the defensive end of the floor, be it in transition or in half court. And there's so many options to score. They have four players in double figures tonight, four average in double figures on the season. Two others at eight points per game. I mean, this is a balanced offense that can burn you in a lot of different places. 
Hopkins for the baseline runner, and Webster is bumped by Zagorowski. That is his third, sixth team foul. 3.34 remaining in the second half, a second half that has been all Blue Jays. Just a four-point game at halftime. Jordi Arnerson on the run. Zagorowski able to save it. And Ballock, the behind-the-back pass for Jones. Zagorowski got clear. The three, no. Kalkbrenner is there. And how about the fifth Blue Jay in double figures? He has 11. I, I, I'm going to keep an eye on that young man. He has a very bright future here. And he did something that you don't see a lot of big guys do, especially earlier in the career. He kept the ball high. He didn't bring it down. There was a Nebraska player there. If he brings it down, he goes from 6'11 to 5'11 unnecessarily. Seven foot there with that block. Changed the shot from Allen. And the ball pops into the corner, out of bounds to the Blue Jays. We talked about the little things that are done so effectively and efficiently by Creighton. Here's one here on the inside. Keep the ball hot. Boom. Reload. Go back up. Don't bring it down. Especially a freshman, Kevin. You'll see them just out of habit because they were able to get away with it at the high school level. Bring the ball down to reload. But you can tell they've worked on the drill, be it the mic and drill or just putting the ball up on the backboard and keeping the ball high. That becomes a habit. You see why it's effective. Yeah, one of the questions that Greg McDermott had at the beginning of this season was how fast could Kalkbrenner adapt to this level of play? I would say the adaptation process has gone well. Jeff Canfield on the floor for the first time tonight for the Blue Jays as Teddy Allen hits the three. He's got a new Husker career high with 26. 218 and counting to go in this one. As the Jays could bounce back from their loss at KU earlier in the week. Canfield, the lob to Kalkbrenner. When you shoot 61% in the second half, good things usually happen, and that's where the Jays are right now. And up 94-71. And a travel turns it back over. Substitutions for the Jays. Into the game, number 14, Sammy Osmani. And number 22. Not a travel, it was a timeout and a substitution timeout used by Coach McDermott. Just wanted to get the bench in. Jay's family members who are here. You hear their applause in the background as the bench clears off. Sammy Osmani on the floor. Nick Zile on the floor. Devin Davis, freshman out there. Mitchell, that's Davis. His baseline jumper is short. Mayen the other way for Nebraska. Elijah Wood, his first look at playing time for the Big Red. Woodrow will go to the rim, and he'll go to the line for one more. On the floor also for the first time tonight for Nebraska's Brett Porter, fourth generation Husker, who is out there for his first appearance of the night. Dan Budge played football in 1975. Board on the football team in the 40s, and Grove, his great-grandpa, played football from 1913 to 1915. Grove did not make any appearances on the Big Ten Network in his day. Shocking, I know, surprising news. Those are the kind of tidbits you've come for in a 20-point game. Jay's trying to close this one out. Jet Canfield steps in for two, and he's on the board. And Canfield, former walk-on, came in when they needed him last year in a game against Texas Tech. He got meaningful minutes and delivered for the Blue Jays. Most points for the Jays against the Huskers in the history of this series. They're looking to continue with the three from the corner for Davis won't go. And Zyle tips it out of bounds to Nebraska with 44 seconds left in the ball game. 96 at 95 a year ago. That was a game that saw the first half 
Hoiberg. Correct. As Fred Hoiberg said, they landed the first punch, then the second, the third, and the fourth. Tonight it was toe-to-toe -to -toe for the first half of this game, but then we've seen a lot of this in the second half, although Wood gets the block and the foul. And they're going to count that bucket as a goal 10. No foul, just a goal 10, and so it's 98-74. Creighton with 30 seconds to go in this one. Stevenson, deep three. Porter trying to keep it alive, and it'll belong to the Jays, who could dribble it out for the final 20 seconds of this one. Dominant second half performance, Sean Morris, and the Blue Jays are going to walk out of here with a win. Creighton just kept coming at Nebraska, especially in the offensive end of the floor. They ran the floor, they sprinted, they spread out Nebraska defensively, and what was a very competitive game in the first 20 minutes, Creighton was able to impose their will in the second and pull away. 98-74 is the final. Coach McDermott, Coach Hoiberg, with the handshake at the end to close this one out. And the Blue Jays pull away late and get the resounding 98-74 victory over the Big Red. Huskers fall to 3-3, three and three, and the Creighton Blue Jays now 4-1. And, one. and for this Creighton program, they are ready to get things going in their conference season. Alok will be ushered to the locker room as well as the Huskers and Jays series comes to a close. And in the second half, Sean, it was three-point shooting for the Blue Jays. So this is a, a staple of what Creighton likes to do, be it in transition or in the half-court set. They spread the floor so well with personnel as well as utilizing dribble penetration and then kicking back to the floor to the filler rather and the one thing that is consistent about everything look where the passes are it's may not be the most glamorous thing but it's so critical when you rely on the three-point shot as much as Creighton can do that they can beat you in other ways Christian Bishop the leading scorer and rebounder for Creighton coming into this ball game making his presence known good active hands here showing you why he's going to be impactful for Creighton not just here this evening but as the Big East season unfolds here in Omaha. Big East season begins in Omaha in just a few days. They'll play Marquette on December 14th. And for the Huskers, non-conference play is over. They've got 10 days between now and their date at Wisconsin to open up conference season in the Big Ten. Final score in this one, a 98-74 win for the Creighton Blue Jays over the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Coming up next, Iowa State and third-ranked Iowa on the Big Ten Network. Tip-off, 9-12 p.m. Eastern, continuing our hoops doubleheader tonight here on the Big Ten Network. For our entire Big Ten Network crew and for my partner, Sean Morris, I'm Kevin Kugler saying so long from Omaha, Nebraska, where the high-flying eighth-ranked Creighton Blue Jays take a 98-74 win over the Nebraska Cornhuskers. So long from CHI Health Center in Omaha, Nebraska.